Before we dive into the video, make sure to take care of yourself and wash your ass. Clean body, clear mind, let's get started. The head miner announced, As per the mining team's policy, the food from the last place team will be distributed among the top three teams. Zephyr glanced back at the team that had landed in last place, noticing their disappointment over the prospect of going without food that night. Commence your prayers to the great goddess of light, Arya, instructed the head miner. The chorus echoed, Almighty Arya, deliver us with your eternal light. Redeem us? Not likely. Zephyr scoffed inwardly, clapping his hands in a sarcastic gesture. The temple devoted to Arya, the goddess of light and one of the three supreme gods, served as the predominant religious institution and the primary moneylender in the region. Among its inhabitants were many who had either lost their homes to monsters or were once adventurers like Zephyr. However, once indebted to the temple with overwhelming medical expenses, they became slaves to repay their debts. For Zephyr, bearing the slave mark meant being tethered to this place indefinitely. If he dared to depart without permission, the mark would trigger a fatal consequence. His heart would cease, ending his life instantly. Zephyr aimed to settle his debts swiftly, eager to secure his freedom and advance to the subsequent phase of his strategy. With determination burning in his eyes, he vowed, Tartarus, you won't defeat me so effortlessly this time. I'm going to retaliate for everything you've done. He placed a hand over his chest, addressing his lover. And Altair, this time I'll shield you. I won't let you down. Anyone in need of items from the store or seeking consultation, please come this way, announced a priestess adorned in a white and gold attire. Zephyr couldn't help but be astonished by the exorbitant prices that persisted even after all these years. Excuse me, sir, can I buy you a drink? Asked the young boy from Zephyr's mining team. Zephyr raised an eyebrow. Do you have any money? He inquired skeptically. I just got some and I can't afford anything expensive, but I appreciate you for saving me from those guys earlier and thanks to you our team came in first. The boy replied earnestly. Everyone in our team is really weak, so we usually end up in last place. This is almost the first time we've earned any money, he explained further. I understand now. That's why they targeted him. If even one person falls ill and can't work, the team's productivity suffers. So if a team sabotages another, it automatically improves their own ranking, Zephyr realized. Are you serious? I can't let a kid pay for me. I have my pride, Zephyr remarked. I didn't mean to offend you, responded the boy apologetically. I just stepped in to stop those guys because they were bothering you. Don't get close to me, kid. You'll only hold me back, Zephyr said dismissively, waving his hand as he walked away, leaving the boy behind. Welcome. What can I get you? greeted the bartender. Zephyr inquired if the barkeeper had any restorative water. I haven't seen you around here before. Are you new? Do you have any money? asked the barkeeper. Those cost one gold per glass and four gold for a bottle. I'd suggest waiting it out if you're not hurt that badly. Here's 1.5 gold, and I'll take out a loan for the rest, Zephyr said, smiling at the barkeeper. You offer loans here, right? Give me the paperwork. Overhearing Zephyr's conversation, the little boy trembled and exclaimed, Are you out of your mind? Do you have any idea how scary it is to take on even more debt? They already take one gold from our daily wage of two gold to pay our debt. If you don't have any income, you go into the red the boy yelled at Zephyr. Zephyr simply told the boy to be quiet as he popped open a bottle of recovery water. Whatever, I'll just pay it back, he said as he drank the recovery water. The recovery water was a popular item at the temple, known for its ability to slightly regenerate endurance. However, what most people didn't realize was that it could significantly boost one's mana if consumed in large quantities. Normally, Drinking over ten bottles at once was required to get even a modest boost, making it less effective. But with this new perk, it became as potent as any potion available. Perk 2, Hermes' Hidden Skill, maximizes the potency of all potions, increases effectiveness by 500%. I can't earn much from the mines anyway. There's no bonus for working extra hard. So, what's my plan, you wonder? Well, what's that? You heard a monster deep in the mine said the head miner. Yes, sir. You should inform the hunting team. I'll guide them to the source of the sound. Dungeons are where the real money lies, remarked Zephyr with a smile.
Monsters are created due to a disruption in mana, and historically most have been hostile toward humans, causing significant problems. Paradoxically, they've also offered certain benefits to humanity. Mana stones are formed within the creature's bodies, while their bones and hides serve as valuable raw materials. Over time, people recognized monsters as a valuable resource. As a result, monster lairs or dungeons are now viewed as perilous treasure troves. The hunting teams are composed of a specially selected group of slaves possessing combat expertise. Due to the peril they encounter while battling monsters, their standard pay is considerable, supplemented by bonuses tied to their achievements and performance. Zephyr wondered why he, an adventurer, was made to work in the mines. He was lost in thought when the barkeeper interrupted, saying he couldn't lend any more money to Zephyr. Confused, Zephyr asked if he had reached the daily limit for borrowing money. The barkeeper replied that he had already borrowed the maximum amount allowed. Feeling disappointed, Zephyr worried if he'd have to resort to stealing. Then, a priestess suggested he could borrow more by selling some of his organs to the temple for research purposes. Zephyr hesitated, considering the offer. He agreed to the priestess's offer and asked for the necessary paperwork, which she gladly provided. Zephyr scheduled the operation for the following week and asked if he could cancel it by repaying the loan. The priestess reassured him, saying they weren't predatory lenders, and he could cancel the operation by paying back the loan. Shocked, the barkeeper asked, Have you lost your mind? Why would you sell your organs? After completing the paperwork, Zephyr requested more bottles of recovery water from the barkeeper, who grumbled in response. It's your life, not mine, he muttered. The priestess observed Zephyr with admiration, thinking, Wow, sir, you're really something. The barkeeper sighed, feeling resigned. There goes another one who'll end up in the lab. The priestess was taken aback by the number of bottles Zephyr drank at once. After finishing all the recovery water, Zephyr smiled feeling satisfied that he met the requirements. Suddenly, three knights appeared and inquired, Are you Zephyr, the one who's going to guide us to the monster? Zephyr grinned, thinking it was perfect timing. Yes, that's me, he replied. One of the knights introduced himself, saying, I'm Gote, the leader of the recon unit, and these two behind me are Dale and Marco. I don't have night vision, but I can use mana detection, Zephyr mentioned while shaking the knight's hand. Night vision helps to see in the dark, whereas mana detection spreads mana to heighten one's senses. These skills are essential for sneaking into a dark dungeon without alerting any monsters inside. That'll save me from buying a night vision potion. If you're ready, we'll leave right away, said one of the knights, handing his belongings to Zephyr. The third knight, whose face was obscured by a hood, smirked. Wow, a mana-using miner? Cool. Is he going to beat the dungeon for us? He added. Gota reprimanded, shut up, Dale, as Zephyr followed behind the three knights. Zephyr recognized one of the people in the group. He knew two of them were new to him. He had an idea about their fate. Two might not make it out of the dungeon alive. He had a plan to use this to his advantage. Approaching the miner's cave, they encountered a group of knights waiting for them. They were the standby unit. One of the knights asked them to extend their hands. He tied a blue rope around each person's wrist. These are magic bracelets. If something happens to one of you, the matching bracelet on your wrist will break. Then you can call for help from the main base, he explained. But it was just a recon mission, so they should be safe if they were careful. Good luck, he said, waving them off. As they entered the mining tunnel, Zephyr took the lead while moving deeper in. Inside, dog-like monsters armed with fire and weapons were patrolling. A small stone accidentally hit the wall near the monsters, catching their attention. Engrossed by the rolling stone, two knights stealthily ambushed the creatures from behind, swiftly cutting their necks. The recon unit's main tasks are to scout for monsters and collect details about the dungeon. With this information, a strike unit is assembled, using their strength to clear the dungeon. That's typically the process. Sir, our task is just to explore the dungeon. Let's not take any extra risks, advised Dale. What if there's a bunch of monsters inside, or stronger ones? There are only three of us, Dale stated. No, there are four. That's enough to handle kobolds, replied Gota. Are you serious? He doesn't count. He's just carrying our stuff. How can we manage a dungeon by ourselves? Dale pointed at Zephyr. Okay, let's calm down a bit. 
Sir, do you have a plan? I'd like to know before we make any decisions. Smirking, Gote asked Zephyr to take the moonbush leaves and berries from the pouch. He explained that if those were ground up and mixed with kobold excrement, it would emit a scent resembling a female kobold in heat. Dale covered his mouth from the stench as Zephyr began to grind the berries. The smell is quite intense, strong enough to travel over 300 feet. The kobold began panting as it caught a whiff of the potion, then dashed swiftly toward the scent. Eventually, the kobold slipped and fell into a hole, a trap set by the knights. See, I told you it would work, Gota remarked. Wow, you're a genius sometimes, sir, Marco praised. Sometimes? You mean all the time? replied Gote with a chuckle. How did you even think of bringing that plant? I've never heard of it, questioned Marco. Gota laughed and credited his insight to experience and maturity, but in truth it was Zephyr who had informed him about it. In Zephyr's previous life before being resurrected, he worked alongside Gote in the same unit after being transferred to the hunting team. Despite his desire for recognition, he never got the chance to achieve it. Just before the team meeting, Zephyr spoke to Gota privately, mentioning that he had ventured in and checked out the area by himself the day before. Everything's clear, Zephyr informed Gota. You went in alone? How many lives do you have? Gota asked, surprised. In his previous party, Zephyr was responsible for reconnaissance, and he had a talent for locating things. So with a plan like that, you think the four of us could handle the dungeon by ourselves? Gota questioned. It's your call, sir, but I believe you should think about it, Zephyr responded. Gota grinned. It'd be a shame to share an easy dungeon like this with others. This guy could be really helpful. Moonbushes aren't easy to find either. I appreciate his preparation and knowledge about hunting monsters. I also admire that he gives credit instead of taking it for himself, Gote thought. As the head of the unit, I could easily get him transferred to the hunting team with just a word to the human resources department. He's probably trying to impress me for that reason. Too bad. I can see he's a hard worker, but I'm not that desperate. Clearing one little kobold dungeon isn't enough to impress me. Nevertheless, I'll gladly take credit for clearing this dungeon, considering your efforts, mused Gota as he handed Zephyr a dagger. All right, that should pretty much handle them, Gota remarked, spearing a kobold. I didn't expect this to be so simple, chuckled Marco as he slammed another kobold with his hammer. Shame the mana stones won't fetch much, dealing with just kobolds. This path's clear now too, said Zephyr. All right, then let's go and finish up, Gota replied, interrupted by Dale's caution. Hold on, there's something ahead. He spotted scattered bones. Are these leftovers or animal bones? Zephyr questioned. No, these look like kobold remains, Dale answered before a massive claw grabbed him and hurled him across the chamber. Marco quickly imbued his hammer with mana, shielding them. I thought we were done. What in the world is hiding here? Never mind, let's cover up and get out. My mana shield can withstand anything, Marco asserted. But the creature's tail shattered his shield striking him hard. Gota, surprised, uttered, that tail, impossible? The tail struck Gota once more. Beyond the mining tunnel, the standby knights noticed three bracelets snapping at once. What's happening in there? Blood dripped from Gota's arm as he struggled to comprehend how he survived the attack. When he glanced up, he saw Zephyr blocking the beast's assault. Zephyr's perk one, the skill wall of iron activated, but his arms throbbed from the impact. The wall of iron couldn't fully deflect it. This creature is likely less than a year old, yet it's incredibly potent. The monster's tail lifted Dale's body while it fixed a fierce gaze on Zephyr, a predator. It manipulates pheromones to deceive other monsters, making them believe it's part of their pack. Then, once it matures, it turns on those monsters, consuming them and abandoning its nest. May I borrow this? Zephyr asked. Gote, taken aback, questioned, Wait, what's going on? Zephyr picked up the spear, a smirk appearing on his face. Finally, a chance to get properly warmed up. Blue mana formed in his left hand. Now, tell me something. How would you prefer me to end you? Perk three, silver key, unlocks a door in an ancient castle grants the holder access to a silver room, allowing the storage of items anytime and anywhere, currently stored in the left hand. Essentially, it works like an inventory, dragonweed and a piece of cloth. Dragonweed is a natural tonic that calms the mind. Zephyr, concentrating, gestured for Gota to step aside. 
He wrapped the bandage around the spear he had just picked up. This is going to be intense, Zephyr warned Gota, showing his strong determination. Shocked by Zephyr's resolve, Gota asked, What are you doing? You're not even a soldier. But Zephyr ignored his remarks. As Gota slowly rose to his feet, he grappled with his inner thoughts. I know my fate will come one day, but I won't meet it cowering behind a miner like this. The beast's howl pierced Gote's soul, an ability inducing fear. It immobilized its opponents with dread. Overwhelmed, Gota slumped back to the ground, trembling uncontrollably. His mind flashed back to a story shared by an experienced soldier years ago when an adult predator attacked a nearby town. The people stood petrified, unable to even blink or move their bodies, paralyzed by sheer terror, awaiting their dire fate. Witnessing the scene before him, Gota was astonished. Zephyr stood undeterred by the predator's fear-inducing skill, fighting the monster without succumbing to paralysis. As the predator roared, Zephyr evaded its attack, swiftly maneuvering and then charging at the beast. It seemed exactly as Zephyr anticipated, adept at negating fear. He expelled the dragon weed, a tonic known for calming the mind. Zephyr's second perk activated, significantly boosting the potency of all potions. Out of the nine perks, only one functions as a weapon. Right now, I can't utilize it due to the enormous amount of mana it demands. However, handling a creature like that should be effortless with this. Number 68 of the 72 Deadly Poisons of Fade Belial. Zephyr recollected a conversation from his previous life with Fade. Are you certain about this, Fade? You've dedicated your life to creating these formulas. Are you sure you want to freely give them away? Zephyr inquired. Fade responded, What's the point of keeping them to myself when the world is heading towards its end? I'd rather see them used than wasted. In fact, I earnestly want you to use them. If my poison can eliminate even one more of those monsters and save just one more life, it would bring me immense happiness. Zephyr sliced at the predator, injuring the creature. Belial, a lethal poison derived from a common plant, permeates the bloodstream, corroding organs, and inducing excruciating pain. This poison's effects, crafted by the sadistic master of poisons, Fade, take about three minutes to fully spread through the body. Zephyr continued to strike the predator, but it retaliated by thrashing its tail, slamming Zephyr against a wall. With a deafening roar, the predator lunged at him. In a swift move, Zephyr tossed the potent poison into the beast's mouth, leaping over it as it collided into the wall where Zephyr had just been standing. The creature bellowed, a pool of blood trickling from its mouth. With just a minute left, or perhaps even less, Zephyr gripped his spear, acknowledging that his current skills weren't enough for a complete escape. He had two options, wait for the predator to collapse or defeat it. The predator lashed its tail at Zephyr once more, propelling him into the air. Zephyr held on, biding his time until the deadly poison took effect. When he freed himself from the predator's tail, he readied his spear to strike at the creature's head. Driving his spear into the beast's eye, it elicited a tremendous roar of agony. As the predator swung its tail again, snapping the spear in two, Zephyr seized the broken piece and drove it once more into the beast's eye. Following that, he used the dagger given by Gota to pierce the other eye. Despite the creature's frantic attempts to dislodge him, Zephyr believed there was still one more decisive strike left. He leaped back onto the beast. Ten years into the past, Zephyr was aware he wasn't strong enough in his present form to outmatch or outlast the predator. Hence, he had prepared in advance by having recovery water. What many didn't know was its ability to significantly enhance mana when consumed in large quantities. Ordinarily, over ten bottles would barely give a boost, but with his perk too, Hermes' secret skill, its efficacy was heightened. Now empowered with sufficient mana, enough to penetrate even a predator's skull, Zephyr unleashed a colossal mana punch that consumed the predator entirely.